And today we're in the fourth week, the last week of our series, Resolutions. How many have made a resolution this year so far? And I pray that in God you do, amen? <laughs> today is day 18, or is it 19? It's day 18 or 19 of the fast, 18, day 18 of the fast of 21 days. We're almost there. How many are glad we're almost there? All right. Uh, if you're not fasting, you're welcome to join us and do about three days. And uh, we believe in starting off the year like this and that God moves. Uh, I want to preach today a message entitled The Last Drawer. Everyone say The Last Drawer because I'm preaching on The Last Drawer. <laughs> and we've talked about all month long the idea of you know, if I put the Bible on top of this dresser, it's like Jesus in our life and he is our savior. But then you and I have a choice to make in this room and online. Will you and I let Jesus go into the deeper layers of our life and let him move inside of us? We talked about disappointment. Then I talked about the breakfast club. Summer talked about dreams and hopes. And today I wanna to talk about in this last drawer two massive things, two monumental things that everyone in this room and online navigate at some level. And I believe when you and I open this drawer and let the Holy Spirit in, great things will happen in our lives. How many believe that today? So if you have your Bibles, please turn to Mark chapter five. I wanna read a story. I'm gonna read a little more verses than normal because I gotta give context to this. I'm gonna read the story of what we call the, of the woman with the issue of blood. And from this story, I wanna pull out two things, as I mentioned, that I believe are in the last drawer. And here's how the Bible records this. A woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding. She had suffered a great deal from many doctors, from many doctors, and over the years, she had spent everything she had to pay them, but she had gotten no better. In fact, she had gotten worse. She had heard about Jesus, so she came behind him through the crowd and touched his robe. For she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Immediately, the bleeding stopped, and she could feel in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. Jesus realized at once that healing power had gone out from him, so he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my robe? His disciples said to him, look at this crowd pressing around you. How can you ask who touched me? But he kept on looking around to see who had done it. Then the frightened woman, trembling at the realization of what had happened to her, came and fell to her knees in front of him and told him what she had done. And he said to her, I love this line, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Let's all say this last line together. Ready, say it. Your suffering is over. How many like that? I mean, your suffering is over. So Father, I thank you for this great moment. Summer and I are honored to be, a past, to be pastors of this great church. And Lord, I pray today that in this moment you would keep us safe as we go about our week and that we would lay down any resistance, set aside any distractions, lean in for a few moments and receive something from the Lord and apply it to our life, move forward in our faith. And we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Everyone said? Now, this is important because the Bible says this, that the spirit of the man, of a man, is the lamp of the Lord searching all the inner depths of the heart. So the Spirit of God is searching all these different layers in us. And he's really wanting us, as I mentioned, he's wanting us to open up these layers and let the Holy Spirit in. So I pray today, if you don't know Jesus, to receive Jesus. If you're far from Jesus, then come back to him. But when you and I receive Christ, as you will, the Bible on top, he's our Savior now our, our identity has changed, our life has begun anew, then you and I have to make the conscious decision to let God in and make us whole. I'm still doing this, how about you? I haven't arrived. And when I see this story, I see two big things that I wanna pull out today, and the first one is healing. Everyone say healing. Notice she said, if I can touch his robe, I will be healed. Now, healing, Jesus the healer, God the healer is a character aspect of God that we see from the book of Genesis when Abraham prayed for Amalek and his family, they were all healed. We see it in Genesis, and then we can go through every book of the Bible, ladies and gentlemen, 
and see the character of God through healing revealed. Our God is a healer. I'm gonna say it again. Our God is a healer. One more time. Our God is a healer. And here's what we believe at City Church. And there's a lot of different teachings about this. I don't wanna get into this today. But at City Church, we believe that he's still healing people today. The Bible says in Hebrews 13 that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The work of the Holy Spirit has not stopped. It's getting stronger and stronger. We believe that Jesus can heal people supernaturally. We also believe that God has advanced medicine and doctors with knowledge and ability, and people can be helped and mended through that too. But when doctors can't solve it, Jesus can do something supernatural about it. How many believe that today? That's what I believe. That's what we believe here at City. And this story has this great subject of healing in it. And while this is true, that Jesus is the healer, here's why this is in the last drawer. Because the truth is, this area of healing within, I would say, Christianity is an area of tension. I'm going to read these things off. At times, unfortunately, confusion, doubt, hope, joy, the area of faith. It's also an area of disappointment in an area of belief. That's because every single person in this room and online has navigated this subject at some level, meaning all of us at some level possibly, and maybe not all of us, but I, you know, I have, I'll say it for me, I have, I've seen someone healed. We have miracles in this church of people being healed by Jesus. Where doctors couldn't, Jesus did it. And so I've seen it. All of us also have seen people not get healed. Maybe all of us in this room directly or indirectly have lost a loved one or a dear friend. We've seen people suffer. Maybe we're suffering right now, mentally, physically, emotionally, because the healing aspect of Jesus is spirit soul, and body. It's the full picture. All of us have, I hoped, seen a miracle. And if you haven't, you will in Jesus' name. <laughs> but also, all of us have cried. All of us have mourned. All of us have gone through great joy and maybe great sorrow. And this subject is huge. Within this last layer this last drawer that we're gonna hit on today, and this is hard to get to, I gotta get in shape here, folks, amen. But if I, if I get down deep enough and I open up this drawer and let God begin to deal with healing, it's really talking about something deep inside of me and really something deep inside of you. Because I want you to right now, just, just think about all the emotions you have with this subject. Some people are taught that God doesn't heal. Some people are taught the Holy Spirit stopped doing this when the apostles all died. Some people are taught that if God wants to do it, he will, or it's not his will to heal everybody. There's so many variations of this topic that it can leave us all in a state of confusion, but I know in this room and online that all of us have gone through something in this subject. That's why it's in the last drawer. Now, in this story, we see a few things that I wanna pull out. Notice in this story, that I just read to you, this woman is identified, her title is the lady with the issue of blood. She's, we don't even know her name. She's identified by her condition. She's defined by her sickness. She's labeled by what she has. This connects to you and I because some of us can be labeled too. Have you ever been labeled before? But when you're going through a sickness or you lose someone, or you're going through suffering, or you're going through something, even though maybe we know your name, you and I can be labeled by the condition. We can be labeled by the drama. We can be labeled by what we're facing, and we're attached to a sickness. We're attached to a loss. We're attached to a label, just like this woman was. Let's go a little bit further. Then she suffered for 12 years, the Bible says. You know how many days that is? If I just take our calendar, that's 4,000, 
380 days of suffering. She went through suffering for 4,380 days. And with her condition of bleeding as a female, under Jewish law, she could not touch anybody. If she would touch her husband, and we don't know if she was married, but we know obviously she had a mom and dad. She had a family of some kind. But let's just say she was married. In that condition for 12 years, if she touched her husband, he was unclean. If she touched her kids, they were unclean. Wherever she slept, it was unclean. Wherever she was, was unclean. In other words, she was isolated, unclean because of her condition. This connects to us today because we're going through something, or maybe you've lost a loved one, a parent, a spouse, a, you know, a child, a friend. Who knows? Maybe you're suffering now. Maybe you've seen a great miracle. Who knows? But you and I can feel isolated. We can feel like, man, does anyone understand what I'm going through? Does anyone understand what I'm really feeling? My mental health is struggling, and it's not changing. I'm seeing someone suffer, and I'm asking God, and why aren't they healed? And, and the Bible doesn't tell us this, but let's just be human for a minute. There's no doubt in my mind, within the 12 years of her suffering, she had to have asked, God, why? She had to have asked, when are you going to heal me? Because she knows the stories of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. As a Jewish woman, she would have known all that God has done. And so she had to have asked, why? Why am I going through this? Is there any hope for me? I wonder in this room and online today, in this subject of healing, have you ever asked, why? Have you ever wondered, is there any hope for me? Have you ever wondered, is God going to ever heal me? Can God heal this person or that person? Will it ever happen? And in the reality of what she was going through, I want you to see what she did, because this speaks to us in this last drawer when it comes to healing, letting God in. The Bible says she heard about Jesus, and then she pursued him. I want to encourage you today, notice she pursued Jesus in the midst of a 12-year suffering state. She pursued Jesus. She pursued Jesus in her bleeding. She pursued Jesus in her condition. She pursued Jesus in her suffering. She pursued Jesus in her questions. She pursued Jesus in her isolation. She pursued Jesus in spite of what she was going through. Notice what the Bible says, she went for him. And this speaks to you and I today on how we navigate healing. I love the story, she went through the crowd. That means she was breaking all the religious rules. She was touching people because remember, I just read the disciples said that many people were pressing him. So there was a tight crowd and she was on her knees and she was pressing through. She was touching people. She was breaking the religious rules to get to Jesus. Oh, aren't you glad that Jesus isn't a religious Jesus? He's just Jesus all by himself and he accepts you and I right where we're at. Oh, if you have a condition today, spirit, soul, or body, he welcomes you. He wants you. He's not casting you out. He's welcoming you in. He's doing miracles in your life. Come to Jesus like you are. He'll accept you like you are, and then he'll change you into who you can be. Come on, give Jesus praise real quick. He deserves it today. And so she was reaching for Jesus, this, and, and she said, if I can touch his robe, I will be healed. And she touched his robe, the hem of his garment, and the Bible says she was healed in that minute. And Jesus said, who touched me? That means out of the hundreds of people that were touching him, only one touched him because her faith was connected to where she was. This speaks to you and I today with our position of healing. You and I have faced so many different aspects on this subject and our emotions right now as I'm preaching on this. Some of you are remembering your grief. You're agitated because you're remembering what you have gone through and what you've seen. And, you're, and you wonder, how can I let God in this last drawer of healing? And I want to encourage you today to let Jesus in. This woman suffered over 4,300 days, but she kept, when she heard about Christ, she went for it. She didn't say, I, why have I suffered this long? I'm not going to go after Jesus. If he wanted to do it, he already would have done it. She didn't say, well, he's not fair to me, so I'm not going to go after him. 
She didn't say, I've already prayed to God. I don't know if he's even the Messiah. I'm not going to go after him. No, she heard about what he did, and she began to go. That speaks to you and I about healing, to let Jesus in. But this, but this drawer is, 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 you know, I got some tight pants on, so it's hard for me to get down this low. But <laughs> what, if, what if Peter had these clothes on in the boat, and he said, come out and walk on the water? Okay. <laughs> Anyway, that was kind of funny. It's just off the top of my head. Anyway, this is a tough subject. So, so how, how do we let Jesus end this? Well, just like the woman, the best way to reach this drawer is on our knees. I want you to hear me right now. So many of us, to the first week's message, are disappointed about healing. That when this subject comes up, and some of us think, man, my loved one's already gone. How can God help me now? I've already suffered too long. But this is where you and I, the whole point of this series is to make a resolution to the power of Jesus that can last a lifetime and impact eternity, that you and I would get on our knees in confusion. We get on our knees when we don't understand. We get on our knees when we're hurting. We get on our knees physically or I would say spiritually when, when, when we just are at a loss and we say this. We say, Jesus, you're my healer and I will choose to believe in you no matter what. Now, as I'm on my knees right here, this message speaks to me, and some of you that have been around city have heard some of my, uh, some of my story, but I remember losing my aunt, 44 years old, leaving behind five kids. I know what I'm talking about today. And then dealing with the aftermath of her being like my second mother, and then having thoughts that I'm gonna die, and then having a battle in my mind not only was I grieving, but then a battle that I'm going to die because she died. And I had to make a decision. Then just last year, I buried my cousin at 48. I've been involved in way too many funerals. I just did a funeral for a, a, young, a young lady that was 23, gunned down in our city. She used to come to our youth group. I know, I know. And you and I have to make a decision to say, Jesus, I'm hurting, but I believe you're the healer. And I'm going to open up this layer, and I'm going to let you in, and I choose to let you heal me and let you make me whole. How do we appropriate this today? How do we think about the woman with the issue of blood and us today in a practical application? If you're taking notes, maybe we just think about a couple things to write down. I want to encourage you today that here's what I do. I'm on my knees right now in front of you, but I've had to do this in my private room and believe that Jesus is a healer. And so what I do is I get on my knees, so to speak, and I open up this layer and I let Jesus in. And I, number one here, as far as application to how we move forward, I, let, I believe that Jesus is the healer based on what the word of God says, not what I go through. A lot of people change the Bible because of what they go through. We don't change the Bible because of what we go through. The Bible changes us whatever we go through. That was good. Amen. That, that, that's good. And we let Jesus in. And we let Jesus begin to deal with us. So I believe God's word over my own them. I don't ignore my emotions. I don't ignore my grief. I don't ignore the reality of loss, but I choose to believe that God is God even when maybe I don't see healing in a physical form. Then what I do, secondly, because I believe that God says that he's the healer, I'm going to continue to pray for people to be healed. So I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't sh you know, shrink back from praying. We keep on praying for people to be healed and to believe God, that God is going to move. 
And so, for example, when I was in Africa in the year 2000, I was there when uh, it, uh, the year turned, and my mom called me. I was in Grasscop, South Africa, on a mountain, and she said, your childhood friend, Jenny, has passed away. And I drive down the mountain to church, and in my mind, I'm saying, God is gonna heal someone tonight in the name of Jesus. I'm not gonna shrink back. I'm not gonna quit. I'm gonna go forward. A lady came with, uh, to the meeting that night with breast cancer. We prayed over her. I was there for over a month during this time. We prayed over her to believe God that she would be healed, and we got the report back about a week later that the doctor verified the cancer was gone out of her breast. So I don't understand why my aunt passed. I don't understand why my good friend Jenny passed. But my job is to believe the Bible and then to pray for the sick and ask God to heal them. And then what I'm doing is I'm also reaching for Jesus to be my healer in my own life, spirit, soul, body. So I'm talking about practical application. I believe the Bible, and then I actively pray for healing. And then number three is, is, is I'm, 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 I'm praying, and a part of my faith is believing that Jesus is the healer today. So he can heal me, spirit, soul, and body. And some of you have been suffering, and you've been praying and asking God to heal you, and it's not done Mental health is a struggle. Physical ailment is a struggle. And in this room and online, people have been praying. And I wanna encourage you, I don't have the answers, but this woman suffered for 12 years, and when she heard, she went. And she went for Jesus. I wanna encourage you today, and this is easier said than done, but man, take this posture. Get on your knees, so to speak, and open up this layer of your heart and let the Holy Spirit begin to move in and give you a fresh and a new with the power of the Holy Spirit. Because remember, he wants to touch every layer, and this is a layer that we have to let God in. How many know what I'm talking about today? This is real, isn't it? And, I, and, and don't, 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 please, and this can be connected here to the first week, but please don't let disappointment Totally just. And, and this is a hard statement, and I, and I don't mean to be rude, but I've gone through this so I can speak from my own grief. But just because God didn't do something for my family with my aunt doesn't mean I have the right to make up a doctrine that he doesn't do it for anybody else. <laughs> Folks, I'm gonna tell you something. This is, and, I, and trust me, I know what it's like to grieve. Over 35 people in my life have died a premature death. But I don't change my belief and change the Bible and say that God doesn't do it and come up with a whole scheme of beliefs because he didn't do it for me. If I did that, that would be self-centered and making it about me. Whether it happens for me or not has nothing to do with the fact that he is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he is the God of me, and he's alive, and he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Come on, give God praise today. We gotta get this here to here. This is a big one. So, I'm on my knees. I'm on my knees, and I open this drawer, and I let the Holy Spirit in. But this story also has a second big one. Say the second big one. This is, this is even bigger. And in this story, what I see, watch out now, I see finances. Ooh. <laughs> this is big now. Deep within us, very deep. Notice what the Bible says here. The reason why I bring this up is because here in verse 26, she had suffered a great deal from many doctors. Over the years, she had spent everything she had to pay them but she had gotten no better. In other words, she lost all of her money. But it's interesting that finances, we see in the Bible that the character of God is our provider. In the book of Exodus, God gave the people bread from heaven. They, the Bible says in Psalms that Aaron and, and, uh, and Moses, under their leadership, that the people of God ate angels' food which is why, personally, I love angel fruitcake. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anyway, 
That was a dumb joke. I'm sorry. That, that, was, that was bad. That, that was totally bad. That's why we like coffee, because no, I'm not even going to say it. I'm not even going to go there. But he brews. But the point is, what I'm saying is, I'm sorry, that, no. I got to get new jokes. You got to pray for me, all right? <laughs> Someone really likes it out there. Thank you. I appreciate that. When you preach, you don't know what you're going to get. Last week, I was preaching in my friend's church, and an old lady came up to me. She looked at me, and she said, you're more handsome up close. <laughs> I said, well. <laughs> I'm glad my wife has great eyesight. Okay. <laughs> Craziest thing. Back to the message. We see that he's the provider over and over again in Scripture, God provided Jesus made the world's first buffet and fed over 15,000 people. Maybe it was Golden Corral buffet. I don't know, but he fed them all. No one laughed at that one, but anyway, I thought that thought, thought was pretty good. But, this, but, but finances is an area of tension, again, like healing, confusion, doubt, hope, joy, faith, disappointment, and so many other things. Everyone in this room and online, just like healing, is impacted with this last drawer, healing and money, because money has to do with the plans of our life. Money, we've all lost money. We've all received money, I pray. We've all hurt about money. I hope we have had a moment of laughter and joy with money. We've also had tears and maybe, maybe even betrayal. Who knows what, what we've gone through? But this woman lost it all. It's interesting that in, for her her, 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 her physical body suffered, but then her finances suffered. Not everyone in their life loses everything. Some people do. Maybe in this room and online, you, you understand that. But that's not really one of where I, that's not where I want to go. I'm just using this, that, that, that in her story, there's a healing part, and the Bible brings up a financial part. And this speaks to you and I about letting Jesus go deep down into the core of our life. Now, how does this connect to us today? Because her sickness was linked to her finances, and eventually she ran out of money. In fact, the number one cause of bankruptcy in America is health costs. So, so we can understand this at some level, even in our country's context, right? We also know that we can also connect to this, that for everyone in this room and online, no matter what level it is, is that all of us have a limitation with our money. There's always a limit. There's always a top out place. And this speaks to she had a limit and it hit the limit and she was out. And finances are intertwined. I wrote this down. Finances are intertwined in our life in a very public and private way. It's very deep within us. And this area, and because of different emotions, circumstances, ideologies, feelings that we have about this subject, then you add God and church to it. Good Lord, I mean. But we're talking about the last drawer. We're talking about something deep within us. I would argue that just like healing is not the surface level argument within the church world. Healing is not on the surface level of is, is God a healer or not? And is it God's will to heal or not? That's, that's the surface. The deeper thing is, man, I'm devastated. That's what it's about. Money is, is, is the surface is church budgets and you know, prosperity or not prosperity or should we be poor or should we be rich or what, you know, what is it? That's the surface. In this deep layer within us is identity, frustration, hope, family patterns, ideologies, connection to what we feel we're worth. And if we're honest, it, it triggers, it's easy to trigger jealousy and envy and competition. It, it, it's, it's fascinating. It, I mean, it's, it's just fascinating. If I reach in here and grab this out, look at this. Oh, Benny, I got Benjamin in the house. I got a stack of them, too. Isn't 
It's just, I've said this before, but it's just green paper. But man, it has power. Why is that? Do we let a little ant in our house have power over us? Do we let a mouse have power? Well, if you're summer, you do. But do you let... Do you, <laughs> That's not a good, because I would jump too. Let's go to something else. Do we let a fly, <laughs> something small, you, you get what I'm saying. But, but, but this is it's interesting, and the Holy Spirit wants to touch us, and this connects to us, and the best way to do this subject is, because seriously, on, on Wednesday when I preached to the staff, this was like, man, I'm, this is kind of hard to get to. But then they had the idea and it was the right on. But the best way to get to this layer for healing and finances is to get on my knees. Get past, again, just like with healing. Holy Spirit, come in, touch me. I'm not gonna debate and argue about healing. Holy Spirit, touch my heart, mend my soul. Help me in my grief. Help me be healthy in grieving or in walking out a process of praying for healing, whatever that is. Money, it's the same thing. We could all do this. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait a minute. We're, if we do this, we're, we're really short-circuiting what's really going on. The Holy Spirit's trying to get deeper inside of us and breathe in us when we let Jesus in, because remember the verse I just quoted, that the Spirit of the Lord wants to search all the inner depths of our heart right here. Deep down inside of us is this healing and finances. And I put down here, God wants to move. And so I remember with the healing part, seeing miracles and also losing people. Um, I remember burying a 10-year-old. I went to the hospital to be with a 10-year-old in her final moments. And she was ready to go to heaven. In less than 30 days, she, her mom was my childhood friend. I buried her mother. With money, I remember when I drove to New York City with my dad for ministry. I was downtown New York, close to 9-11. And my car started smoking. And it was amazing. The, uh, uh, a rod in the engine busted. And I didn't have enough money to get it fixed. Oh, I had emotion that day. Have you been there before with money? Ticked off. I'm in New York City. What am I supposed to do? I don't have the money to fix my car. How are we going to get back home? It was scary had to call the tow company and just figure out a way to pay the tow bill. So I, I understand what it's like. That's just one story. I got a lot of stories about healing and money, that you got to let God in, and I understand what it's like, but here's what we do. We let the Holy Spirit in. We open up this drawer, and we let the Holy Spirit begin to deal with us and move forward. So we talked about the application of healing. Here's the application of finances. We choose to believe, just like with healing, we choose to believe that he's a healer. We choose to believe that God's a provider. God's our source, folks. I said God's our source. We choose to believe from the Bible that God's our source. Now, God gives us resources like skills, abilities, the empowerment to work. The empowerment to work. The empowerment to work. The empowerment to work hard. Can I get an amen? All right. That's what the Bible says. It's in Old and New Testament. We believe that he is our source, but as the source, he provides resources, ways, in other words, ways to provide for us. We believe that he is our provider. So we get on our knees and we believe that. So this is the practical application. Like I talked to you about healing, this is about money. We believe that he's our provider. Number two, we believe that if, if he's provided for one person, he can provide for the next person. It's just like with healing. If God's healed at least one person in the world, hear me, if God's healed one person in the world, if God's healed 
one person in the world, that means he can heal the next person in the world. And if God's provided for one person, God can provide for you. So we believe, again, it goes back to the Bible. It goes back to what the scripture says. And I choose to believe what the Bible says. Now, when I, when I come to Jesus, remember this right here? When I let Jesus come in my life, now I'm a child of God. Now I, I'm a part of a different system. I'm in America, but I'm a part of a different system. I'm, I'm a part of God's system. And God moves in me. So healing, God can heal my grief, and God can heal terminal disease. Right? He can do that. And then with finances, this does not have this does not have to block me. And this does not have to block me. This can be a point of worship to Jesus for who he is and what he does. And I will trust him as my healer and pray for others. And I choose to believe that he can do it. And I believe I'm going to see it. And then this doesn't have to be a point of shutting down and getting all worked up. This can be a point of I can worship God with what he's given me. I can bless God. I can thank God for what I do have and, and see what God does with my life and let him move in me. Because listen to this statement. The Bible says to trust him for healing. Proverbs chapter three, verse eight. The Bible says, trust him for healing. Healing will come to you. You know what the Bible says about finances? Test him. Malachi 3.10. So notice he says, trust him for healing, test him with money. I'm not making this up. The Bible says this. And so what we have to do is let the Holy Spirit open us up. We have to let more Holy Spirit, more Holy Spirit go deep down inside. Because see, this is not, this is not the surface is the argument of healing and the argument of money in church and people get all worked up and oh, oh, you know, get all mad about stuff. Wait a minute. Go, go deeper. Go deeper. And let God in the deep places of our heart. And let God, he and I have to let God heal me with my grief and if even another level of transparency, I have to let God heal me with finances. In my attitude, in my mindset, in my, pers in my perspective, and so I want to ask you today to let the Holy Spirit open this up and let God move in the last drawer. So financially, we believe that he's our provider. We believe that if he provided for one person, he can do the next person. And then we believe the Bible says to test him with money. So how do we do that? So with healing, I'm going to give you two physical ways to do this so it's not amb ambiguous. When it comes to healing, when someone says, I'm sick, I want to challenge you if they're comfortable you don't, and it may not be, if they're comfortable, say, can I lay hands on you? That's biblical. James 5, 14 through 16. Hebrews 6, laying on the hands is one of the six foundational doctrines of our faith. And so if they're comfortable, lay hands on them. Don't push them down. Don't be weird. You know, I saw one person one time, man, can you pray for my headache now? I don't know what just happened, but uh, don't do that. Don't do that. Just don't, don't be weird, Okay. God, just, just pray for him or touch him. And then uh, here's my encouragement. Here's how I pray. I don't, I, don't, I don't pray. I'm not putting you down. I'm not putting anybody down. I'm just telling you what I do. I don't pray, God, if it's your will, because I believe it is his will. Okay? Just like it's God's will to save. The Bible, Paul told Timothy, it's God's will to save everyone, but not everyone is saved. And when I lead people to Jesus one-on-one -on -one outside of church, I never go to them and say, now, Father, if it's your will to save them, save them. That'd be weird, wouldn't it? How would they feel? And then I would say, it's not God's will. Sorry, you're gone. Anyway, I, I, that'd be weird. So with healing, I don't say, Lord, if it's your will, I say, Father, in Jesus' name, I speak to this hip, I speak to this heart, I speak to this whatever it is, brain. I speak to it to be healed in the name of Jesus. In fact, right now on my fast, we have a loved one, I have a, I have a loved one that is battling for their life. And so I'm fasting. Part of my fast is for her to be healed. And when I prayed for her, I said, in the name of Jesus, I speak to this part of the body to be healed in Jesus' name. Are you with me? You can do this and, and lay hands on them and speak it. And you say, what if it, ha what if it doesn't happen? No, what if it does? What if it does happen? Oh, what if it does happen? 
I'm like, what if it does happen? Right? And then you and I let God have his way. We let God, hey man, we prayed for my aunt and my job was to pray for my aunt. Not to determine what God was gonna do. So I pray for healing and with finances, that's how we physically op, you know, can apply, you know, have application with healing. With finances, there's no doubt. We can give to God. We believe in giving, Summer and I give our tithes and offerings to the city. Start giving tithes and offerings. If you can't do that, start giving what you can. But physically give to God and watch God move. So I open up my heart. This area of my life is intense, but I choose Holy Spirit. You're on top of my life. I open the drawer. I let you in all the hurt, disappointment, hope, everything. Come in, Holy Spirit. Heal me. I let you in this area. I choose to believe, and I let healing and money not be a stumbling block, but actually be a platform to stand on and say, you are good, you are God, you are holy, and you will come through for me. How many believe that in the name of Jesus? How many believe that in the name of Jesus? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. One more time. In the name of Jesus, he shall come through for you. He shall come through for you. Man, I'm preaching so good, I'm sweating up here. I don't know what's going on. Hallelujah. Up and down, up and down. So I want to encourage you today. I know this message may be triggering some people. Maybe not everybody, but some. And, 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 and I'm not, but, but can, I be, can I be bold here today? If we're triggered... If we're triggered by one of these or anything else, instead of shutting down and running out, maybe we should say, Holy Spirit, what's, what's in me that you're trying to get to that I'm blocking? So I'm gonna encourage you today, this year, we wrap up our fast, on Tuesday, Tuesday or Wednesday, open up this layer this year, let God he begin to heal. It may take time to disappoint. Let God in and let him help you. Remember all this, remember all these clothes, remember all that? Dear God, let God in and, and, and begin to help you with the breakfast club, the struggles of being a disciple. That's what that message was about. Then let God in all your dreams and your hopes. Don't shut down. And then let God in this deep layer with healing and finances and let him have the last drawer. How many believe that Jesus can do it today and help us one step at a time? <laughs> Hallelujah. Please bow your heart and bow your head to heaven in this room and online today. And you would say today, Pastor Dave, I'm, I, I, I'm not, I don't know Jesus. That means you have never in your life out loud said, Jesus, save me. If you've never done that, I pray today is your day. If you have done that, but you have drifted far from God, I pray that you would come back to God, and I pray that you would say yes to him. And if that's you, we're not here to embarrass you. We're here to help you take one step closer to Jesus. In the room, and please online, respond to the online host. And you would say today, Pastor Dave, that's me. Head, head bowed, hearts bowed. That's me. I want to receive Christ for the first time and or come back to Jesus. If that's you, go ahead and raise your hand to heaven. I want to pray for you to receive Christ today in this place. God bless you. Awesome. God bless you. Good. God bless you. Good. God bless you. Good. God bless you. Good. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. And then you would say, you know, Pastor Dave, if I think about the Holy Spirit moving in the deeper layers of my life, and all month long, as I've already mentioned the previous weeks, today the last drawer with healing and with finances. You would say, I, 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 I would like God to help me to, to let him in and heal anything in me in regards to healing, maybe of also a sickness or a condition or a struggle, and with finances that God would come in and help me and I would practically apply healing Believing, praying, practically apply finances. He's the provider, giving, and 
trusting God for healing, trusting God with finance, and seeing God help me in both areas. If that's you today, go ahead and raise your hand. I wanna pray for you all over this room. Thank you, hands up all over and online. Follow me in this moment and say, Lord Jesus, my heart is yours and I run to you. Please forgive me for anything that's wrong in my life. I turn away from that. I say yes to you. I choose you. I ask you, more Holy Spirit in my life. Come in this last drawer. I let healing and finances be a point of worship to who you are. And I draw close to you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Let's give him a great hand clap of praise today. I believe God did that, doing that.